Hello, hello, my name is Sean and welcome to my first video as I explain what I'm trying to do. I have no experience in front of a camera other than being filmed doing embarrassing things and uh, I really don't like being in front of a camera so I do apologize if I'm a little awkward, but we're all a little awkward these days. Anyway, I just want to go over a project idea I have. I want to kind of show people where I go from uh, insane thought to reality and I think it would be amazing to actually do a bit of a video explaining what I do and you know showing people who have always asked well how do you go from this to this to this and you know it's what my hope to do is uh, what we're gonna start is with my very first pro uh, or what my very first project on camera is going to be is going to be uh, my fourth lamp. It's actually uh, going to be a music note block from Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, I'm going to take the 2D sprite, blow it out into 3D, and turn that into a cute little accent desk lamp that you'll just kind of like slide onto a desk and hit a button. That's what I'm imagining right now, but uh, as you'll see going through this with me, that necessarily what I have imagined is going to be reality. Um, that's why one of the things, first things I do is I sketch out Pardon me, I got a bit of gas. Probably shouldn't drink Coke before doing this. Lesson number one learned when doing uh, actual live YouTube. Um, back on track. So, one of the first things I do anytime I try and do any kind of a project is I want to, I want to sketch everything out. I actually have a little book that I have no idea where it is right now, but it is somewhere. And when I find it, I will start sketching again. But in the meantime, I've lost it and I've put it in a safe place. Um, which means I will ine inevitably never find it till I'm not looking for it. So, as I said, this is my fourth lamp. Um, my first lamp was a Christmas gift for a very dear friend of mine. Uh, she absolutely loved it. It was a sprite from the game Wario Woods on the original NES. Um, it was one of the, I don't know what it is, it's like a bunny thing. I can't describe it. I don't think any of the, the, the things you killed in the game had a name. Um, but I made her one of the things that she liked to kill. Um, it was green and black. It was made out of a, uh, a green fibrous paper and a black fibrous paper. Uh, the idea is it was very thin, very light. It would let in a lot of light when it was used as a lamp so that it would kind of glow when you turned it on, which I, I obsess about that idea, by the way. Uh, I did it, it worked, it was great, I loved it, and I made a very valuable lesson, um, or rather I learned a very valuable lesson from that. I should use proper English when doing this. Um, and that lesson was that you can't necessarily use an incredibly thin light paper. You can, it works, it's awesome, but over time what happens is it stretches out, like the, the weight of the paper itself, it doesn't have that structural uh, integrity or strength that you necessarily need um, and so it ended up elongating over time which upset me um, which upsets anybody when they make something they want it to stay perfect forever because it's their creation and they want it to be perfect and though they're probably picking it apart like I am it's probably fine just the way it is and people still love it nobody's noticed but you're a perfectionist and obviously you've torn it apart but anyway I digress Second lamp was a Super Mario Brothers uh, one, Super Mario Brothers one on the NES, uh, one up mushroom. Uh, took that 2D sprite, blew it out into 3D. Loved it. It was awesome again. So happy with it. Um, but I did have to cheat when making it. Uh, I made a very valuable lesson. Uh, origami paper, because this one was made strictly, I should mention, out of origami paper, traditional origami paper, is not translucent. Um, it's actually kind of opaque. Uh, I've got a piece here. Uh, this is white. Um, and it looks it looks like I can hold this up to the light. And it's, it's, it's pretty translucent. It looks good. But then you have to remember that you're going to fold this. And then layers are going to double up. And when you start doubling up layers, it becomes more and more opaque. And that's what happened. Uh, so the way I cheated is I ended up leaving out sections on the bottom of the lamp. Uh, without any paper so there would be holes underneath like so when you looked up there was holes uh, to let light out otherwise it would be um, a box I guess really is what it would be is a box um, 
and that's not really good for lighting room. Um, so that sucked. Uh, the third lamp was a combination of the first papers used in the first two lamps. I used uh, black origami paper with the uh, fibrous green paper, and that turned out awesome. Uh, so what ended up happening is the black paper obstructed the light, uh, this was not a 2D sprite blown into 3D, I should specify. This was a purely 2D sprite. It was a box. The, the shade for the lamp was a box. And each of the panels had a uh, Space Invader sprite on it, which was so cool. Because what happened is, uh, with the origami paper blocking the light and the fibrous paper, when you turn the lamp on, the sprite would glow, and that was cool. That was freaking cool. Um, so I really love that one. Even though it was very simple and not very uh, elegant, um, like I said, it was just a box, nothing fancy. Uh, it was an awesome lamp, and uh, the person who I made it for, again, another dear friend, she loved that one, and it made me so happy to uh, just make make that one, because it was such a simple thing. It didn't take long at all. I loved the result. Um, I got to cheat and use bigger paper. Um, yeah. So the fourth lamp is going to be, as I've mentioned, a music note block from uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, as you can see here, I've done a little sketch, uh, some math to figure out how big I want to make this. Um, side view, top view, this section here is basically a fill in for what the base is going to be. Uh, and what the proportions are I want for the shade and the base. Um, and it's kind of difficult to see in this 2D drawing, but at least for me, this is how I figure out how to take a 2D object and blow it into 3D. I have to do like a sort of like a draft image of what it's gonna look like. Um, you can also see here, it might be a little hard to see. There are red lines that go through here in each of those squares. Remember, that was so I could count up how much paper I'm gonna need. The red lines are to designate four unit quadrants. Uh, they're how I make the paper. And I'll get into what I do for that later. For now, I just wanna talk about the idea in this episode. Um, and I think I'll do a second episode on the units and how they work and like some troubleshooting. And then, I don't know. I really don't know how I'm gonna do this because I've never done this before. So any feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, Constructive criticism, though. Please don't tell me I suck. I know that. Um, so what am I going to make this out of? This being my fourth lamp and all the lessons that I've learned. Um, I want to experiment. This is the first time I'm going to be making a desk lamp uh, instead of a swag lamp, which is what the other three are. That's the proper name for a hanging lamp, by the way. Um, swag lamp. So my first thoughts... Uh, I ended up scouring the internet for types of paper that I could use, and I came across uh, vellum. Vellum is a wonderful piece of paper here. Um, it's got a very nice texture when you hold it up to the light. It's quite translucent. Um, it looks really good. Like Even just comparing it to the origami paper, it's so much better. But it is thicker and so that makes it very tiring to work with and you might not think paper is tiring but when you're going to make 1,232 pieces of uh, I guess units um, that's tiring and it gets exhausting so that was one strike against the vellum but I didn't learn this till I started working with it because I never worked with vellum so I was kind of excited to work with vellum especially because it has such a beautiful pearlescence to it uh, I thought it would be really cool for the lamp, um, but I ended up having to scrap it. it, it I have the sheets, I'm hopefully going to use these for another project, I don't know what yet, but I'm hoping I'll think of something, uh, so I'm going to hang on to them. Uh, and like I said, origami paper, that's out of the question, it gets too opaque. Uh, I am going to use the black though for the, uh, the note and the black frame around the box. Uh, I want that to be opaque. I also want something that'll be a little stiffer to act as a frame and as a support structure for the, the, the shade. So that's why I'm using that. Um, and then 
what I've settled on is I ended up going to Michael's and just buying a pad of tracing paper. Uh, there's like 300 sheets here. It is amazing. Uh, it's everything I need. It's a little stronger than tissue paper. Tissue paper is a little too flimsy. Um, it's pretty close to uh, tissue paper. A little stronger. It's a little more translucent than the vellum, which is awesome. So what's going to end up happening is, at least in my head, is when you have the black frame around it and you hold it up to the light, the white parts of the music block block should glow. And I think that's going to be awesome. Um, and then, yeah, what I do is, actually the worst part about the vellum, by the way, is you have to draw very faint uh, graphite lines using a pencil. Uh, preferably a mechanical one, so you keep the consistent width. That's pro tip number one. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's really hard to see that when you're trying to, to cut it, um, especially in a very well-lit room. Uh, it's just difficult to see, so. It's gonna be one of the troubles working with the tracing paper as a medium for the origami, but I think it's gonna be cool. Um, and yeah, I think that, I think that's a good a good starting place for this. I haven't settled on what the base is going to be, but that's what the shade is going to be. And I think this is going to be a very cool project, and I'm really excited to take people along and show them how I get from point A to point B, and sort of the insanity that goes through my head when I design things. And I, I hope you are looking forward to it, and I hope you enjoy. Um, like I said, I think next episode I'm going to go through the assembly of the units. Um, again, I apologize, I'm new at this, so if I... Any feedback is greatly appreciated, uh, and uh, this is where I say goodbye. Um, so I hope you all have a great day, hope you all take care of yourselves, and until I see you again, uh, take care, bye bye.